The, the next slide here, I, I, I sat in on a history class this past week, and so you know, I thought uh, I might get some brownie points there for, uh, for having a, a good history quote. I got a thumbs up there. Uh, John Wesley exhorted his prisoners to gain all you can, save all you can, and give all you can, because all that we have is given to us by God, and since we have been entrusted with these possessions, you are responsible to use them in ways that bring him glory. And I think that, that one kind of uh, uh, quote really summarizes my, the, my perception of fundraising in general, uh, is that we have an opportunity to be generous. We have an opportunity to be generous because we have been given so much. And that's really a, a, a sense of biblical stewardship. And uh, I try to model that in my own life. And as I'm talking to people, I'm finding ways in conversation to encourage them uh, to think about it in that way. Maybe some of you this morning are kind of thinking, oh, you know, fundraising, it's a four-letter word. I don't want to have to talk about that. But, you know, if you're leaving this place and going into ministry, I can almost guarantee that some aspect of your ministry is going to be touched by a need or an opportunity or a reason to do some fundraising. And I would just encourage you to take this kind of uh, example uh, as a model for what that means. What I love uh, is that, that last sentence there, to use it in ways that bring him glory. And, and everything that we do has an opportunity to bring God glory or to not bring him glory. And I would encourage you to find ways and opportunities to use not only your money, and, and fundraising in that respect, but to talking in broader terms of generosity and to use your time and your resources in ways that bring honor and glory to God. So this is the passage that we read, and I just wanted to highlight uh, the, one of the things that I want to touch on is the center in yellow. They gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us. And so there's a headspace there. There's a perspective that's larger than one person to say, this is the reason I'm doing something. There's a willingness to serve in the serving. And it's not out of obligation. It's not out of uh, a reason that someone else is imposing on us, but it ought to be something that is from the heart. And so that, that says that. But the Apostle Paul does make it very clear. We want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. And so there's opportunity there to be encouraged to be doing that. When we talk about generosity, as I touched on, it, it is more than just money. Sorry. Generosity is a quality that's a lot like unselfishness. Someone showing generosity is happy to give time, money, food, or kindness to people in need. And so as I, I want to begin to transition uh, to the idea of volunteering today as, as part of uh, the way that faith and work show themselves in our lives and, and our willingness uh, to give of ourselves in that way. I want us to start thinking about the idea that it is more than just money. Uh, it's more than just that, oh, I want to sign off my 10% my to the church and then I'm good. You know, there's opportunities for generosity that go above and beyond that. So who am I? What, what do you want to know about me? Some of you have already stopped by my office and, and poked your head in and, and talked to me, which is great, and I love that. Please do. Please, any of you, uh, stop by and say hello. When someone comes to... Uh, get to know me first. Sometimes they've heard something about me, and often it's about some of the things that I volunteer in, and so I wanted to kind of share that with all of us today. Uh, this is what I put on my LinkedIn, uh, and I have a passion for fundraising and relationship building because that's how I approach fundraising. I'm formerly a small church pastor in the Brethren tradition, uh, but have moved on from that. I've been in sales for a lot of years, and sales put me through uh, my, my Bachelor of Theology and my Master of Theological Studies, and so kind of always had this two tracks going in my life of sales and ministry, uh, ministry being uh, volunteer and not paid uh, professional uh, ministry, uh, but nonetheless, these two tracks. And in fundraising, they kind of come together, and that's, that's been something that I've really appreciated. Uh, and what I really love is whether I'm sitting in an executive's office in a fabulously expensive chair and the, talking to a person in, you know, an Armani suit, you know, feeling a little underdressed, <laughs> or whether I'm sitting uh, around a kitchen table that's, you know, a, a thousand-year-old linoleum floor and whatnot, it doesn't matter who I'm talking to. It's an opportunity to express appreciation, and that's my job. I get to thank people, and out of that comes uh, relationship to the school and from that f fundraising. But if you want to know a little bit about me, I can often be found scuba diving on the Great Lakes. I volunteer my photography skills as head photographer for the Honda Indy and the Royal Winter Fair. So 
I was told that I was allowed to bring some pictures. So this is going to take a little bit of time, and I hope that you enjoy uh, this walk uh, along uh, with me on this. Uh, first of all, I don't really volunteer uh, for scuba diving, but I just got back from Tobermory last weekend. Uh, so this is uh, in Tobermory. The water is eight degrees. So maybe that tells you something about me. I'm a little crazy. Uh, this isn't me, by the way, but it is one of my friends that was on the boat with me uh, and a, a professional photographer friend uh, who took that. So that's just a little quick uh, aside. Um, the Honda Indy, I've been the head photographer, uh, lead team photographer for 11 years. Uh, this is my team, uh, and I'll forgive me, but the, the projectors throw off the color a little bit. Being a photographer, it's kind of one of those like, okay, that red's a little blown out. And so just, you know, humor me with that. Uh, but this is my team, kind of a little bit of everybody uh, on the team. We're all volunteers. Uh, we show up for 8 a.m., and we're still there at 8 p.m., uh, finishing up the day. Uh, they, they shoot thousands of photographs, they rush back to the media center, they process them, figure out what the best cropping is to do, I figure out if they've given me everything that I need, send them back out for things, and, and that's, that's our day. Long days of hard work for no pay. Volunteering. It's great. At the top right there, that's one of the fellows on my team, he probably has the largest lens of all of us, and so, you know, he's the one that gets the most work out every, every uh, indie weekend. So that's a, a 600 millimeter 2.8 lens for anyone that is uh, so inclined and, and geeky with me. Uh, and it weighs quite a bit. So he comes in soaking wet, sweaty, gross, like it's always July, so it's always the you know, hot, summer, gross day. And I'll say, Rick, I need one more shot. Can you go get it for me? Yep, yeah, pile it all on, pump his way out there. And, and he, we, we generally put on about 15 or 18 kilometers a day of walking around the, the ground. So he does that with that gear on. Funny story, the, the, the photo at the bottom of uh, one of my team looking through a photo uh, hole. The first year that I was asked to be a volunteer uh, team lead, uh, it came across in, in stages. And I was asked first to consult because a friend of mine knew that I was a photographer. She had just taken on volunteer coordinating of like 500 volunteers. And one team was the photography team. And she had no idea where to start. So she said, John, would you mind just helping me out? I'm like, sure. Can you just vet a team of eight people from this list of everybody that's asking for ad access? And can you tell me who would be good? I'm like, sure, no problem. So I'm checking their gear, and I'm shooting them some emails. I'm making a few phone calls, finding out who they are. And I give her back this list of eight people that I think are, you know, got the right attitude and, and the right skills and good gear and all the rest. She says, wow, that's really great. So we don't have a team lead yet. I'm like, oh, well, I'm sure you'll find someone. Maybe this person would be good. And she's looking at me like, no, no, no. Would you do it? I'm like, at this point, I knew nothing about race cars. I knew nothing about the sport. I just knew about photography. And I knew about people. Because at the time, I was a, a pastor. And she knew that. And so she said, you have leadership skills that would come to bear in this opportunity. Would you please help us out? I'm like, OK, what could go wrong? <laughs> I show up first day, you know, the, the couple days early. And uh, I show up to one of the, the track coordinators that travels with the track. And he says, oh, John, good. Glad you're here. Come on over. I'm like, sure. Here's some ribbon. Here's the keys to my, go my uh, golf cart. And uh, what else do you need? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's a track map. OK. I'm like, what are we doing? He says, I need you to go mark out where the holes should be in the fence. Never seen the track before. Never attended. Never volunteered. Never seen it. Never even watched it on TV. So I'm walking around. Gee, this looks like a good spot. Put some tape around it. And behind me come a team of guys that are cutting holes and fence behind me. I learned a couple days later, as the racing was going on, what a high impact zone is. And it's where the car is coming really fast and has to make a turn high speed and comes really close to the wall right there. And if there's a big hole in the wall right there, it's kind of scary to stand there, because if they hit it, it really jumps. <laughs> so some of my holes got closed up, and, and I learned a little bit uh, that year. And I figured, OK, that's it. They're not going to want me back. Uh, but sure enough, next year, they, they asked me back. And I've been doing it for 11 years and, and having a, a complete blast. Um, so let me show you just a couple of, of shots. This is kind of the classic shot of a sports car. Uh, and this is what. The uh, Toronto Star would be shooting. This is what the Toronto Sun is shooting, Sports Illustrated. Everyone who's standing beside me in that photo hole uh, is shooting. Uh, but what the, the indie uh, track owners actually need 
and the white reason that there's a volunteer team uh, is that they want you know crowd engagement. They want to you know have have shots of of what's going on, and so it can be uh, a little bit challenging. And as I teach people how to to shoot for us, I do tell them if you're going to take a picture of a car, here's your free uh, photo uh, lesson of the day. Make sure the wheels are spinning, right? Get a slow shutter speed, pan with it, because if if I shoot with too fast of a shutter speed, the car looks parked on the asphalt and it looks silly. So that's your that's your free uh, lesson for today. This is Dario Franchitti. He was the, the race winner in the second year that I was doing things. He has just stood up from his car having just finished the race. And a whole bunch of us kind of crowd over. And I'm shooting, you know, hoping that I get a shot and uh, having a, a, a great time, like, right in the middle of the action. And uh, I, I could never have thought I would be standing there and volunteering, let me do that. Both of these shots are from people on my team because it does take a team approach uh, to what we do. And you never know where the shot's going to be. So for uh, Hinchcliffe here on the right, I was way off to his side. So I never would have gotten that shot. And it's perfectly framed. And it shows the Honda Indy Toronto. And then uh, uh, Dixon there on the other side, just getting out of his car, the big celebration, the confetti. Uh, and, and Alana, was, that was the first year she had been on the team, didn't know anything about shooting. Uh, or she knew about shooting, rather, but didn't know anything about racing. And so she had an opportunity to get one of the best shots of the weekend. And so it was, a, it was a lot of fun. But it does take a, a team approach. You do get a chance to, to experience uh, a lot of the emotion of what's going on at the race. Uh, so you have Danica Patrick here on the right. Uh, if you're into car racing, you know she's moved on to NASCAR. Uh, there's Dario Franchitti, kind of after a long day in the, uh, the press conference room, feet up, looking completely baked. Uh, there's, there's my shot of, of Hinch, just uh, you know, about the same time as that other one. So I was lining up something totally different. And we were all kind of hitting it uh, from different perspectives. Uh, so kind of interesting to, to get that insider look. Uh, and you don't, you don't get a chance to see uh, you know, someone like Dario Franchitti there on, uh, on TV looking like that. They, they, don't, uh, they don't tend to show that. Uh, but you really get a sense of, of who these people are and uh, the, the emotion of the weekend. So as I said, on our team, we shoot the people. And so this was uh, uh, an awesome shot of these two kids, like, whoa! Like, you totally feel what's going on, right? Uh, and uh, some of the people I've shown this to, they actually know exactly what's on the track right now, because there's actually multiple series of cars that are, that are going. Uh, but before I show you what they're looking at, none of the photographers that are shooting for the newspaper turn around and get a shot of the crowds and their reactions. But when the track owners want to promote the race, this is what they want to show. And so that's why we do the volunteering. But, but here's what's on the track. And that's what they're doing. Wow, like it's these off-road trucks going over jumps, flying through the air. It's a little bit uh, funny color for the, the screen, so I apologize. But totally fun. Like all of us just have a blast. And, and basically, all of us have that same look that the kids have. Um, here's another shot. Fast car, good wheel spin. <laughs> um, when these cars are going past us, and I'm standing, you know, like from here to the, the back row close to them, and sometimes even they're closer, they're traveling a football field a second. So hundreds of kilometers an hour. It's amazing and exhilarating to just be near them uh, when they're going that fast. And yeah, there's some safety concerns, and we have to have our head in a swivel and know what's coming down track and, and be careful. Uh, but it's, uh, it's really pretty exciting. We also get some pretty crazy access. Uh, so you know, right in the pits, this is not my photo, it's one of my team, uh, but standing right in the pits because we wanted to show the crowds in the background, showing people enjoying the race. Uh, you, you can't get a shot like that from the grandstands. And let me tell you, it takes a lot of nerve to get this shot when there's also a car that would be right beside him, ripping away only a couple feet away. And he still has the presence of mind to get the shot that uh, I asked him for. So that was uh, pretty impressive. But we do get some unique access. This is the pits. And again, we've got it framed so that we see uh, the people in the background. This was uh, one of my shots that uh, I didn't like. And I showed it around to people, and uh, especially people on my team. And they thought it was amazing because I had the chance to be up actually in the flagger stand to take the picture. There's only like two people allowed to be up there plus the guy waving the flag. And so it's an amazing opportunity. And it was really cool. And I was really nervous. And you know, I'm practicing. And I'm basically you know, doing the 
shot from my, my straight arm, holding it up, trying to picture it and angle it and get the right shot. So I showed it to people, I'm like, John, that's an amazing picture. I'm like, mm, it's a second place car. <laughs> I totally missed the first place car going by. So can't use it except to show you and uh, to, to laugh at uh, how inept my, my photography skills were that day. So I was working on the Honda Indy for 11 years and, and uh, partway through that, the, the president left and he actually became the CEO of the, the Royal Winter Fair. And so I saw on LinkedIn that he had made the shift and I had, had a good relationship with him. So I sent him a little message and like, hey, Charlie, congratulations, a new kind of horsepower, eh? Come on, come on. <laughs> so, you know, he did that same thing too, like, all right, you know, that's not the first time I've heard that. Uh, and so I offered uh, the teams, uh, you know, I said, that I'm sure there'd be some people on the team that would be interested to come shoot for you if you'd like a team of volunteers. You have a ready-made package ready to go. So he said, all right, I'll take you up on that. He told a couple of people in the office, and they were very skeptical, you know. So I got the phone call, and I got grilled. Okay, so you don't want to get paid. No, no, if you could give us some free tickets so my family could come, that would be great. But no, we do this for fun. We're volunteering. We'd be happy to help you in this. We know Charlie, and we would like to help Charlie in this endeavor, same as we helped him at the Indy. Oh, OK. They hire a professional photographer. The professional photographer assumes that I'm just doing it for free, like the first hit's free, but the next one you're going to pay for. So he just assumes that I'm edging out for his job. I'm like, nope. We're just having fun here. We get a chance to be in some amazing places with our gear. and. We want to volunteer. We want to help you out. Explain that we knew Charlie. We want to help out Charlie. So eventually kind of people figured out that maybe volunteering could be innocent, that it didn't have to have ulterior motives. But let me tell you, we do get some amazing access at the Royal Winter Fair. So I'm a city boy. Some of you are, are, uh, some of you are city people. Some of you are uh, country people. The country people are going to laugh at me going, oh, wow, a horse. But it was kind of amazing for the city boy to be there. So. When these Clydesdales go ripping past you and you're a foot away from them, like the ground is shaking. It's just unbelievable. I also learned more than I wanted to know about show jumping. I had never seen show jumping before. I didn't know how to get the right framing, so had a great opportunity to, to learn a little bit and to enjoy my hobby while volunteering and, and working hard. And just like the uh, Indy, it's 12-hour days, sometimes longer. Uh, and this runs 10 days. Now, I don't go to every single one, uh, but I do burn up a fair bit of my vacation time each year going to volunteer for uh, these two events. Not just a, a horse jumping, but the, the, the sponsor of this particular event. And these are the kinds of shots, you know, the, the placement for organizers and things like that uh, that we are shooting and, and having a great time. It's okay to have fun while you're working hard, very hard. This, uh, if any of you uh, know anything about horses and, and show jumping, you'll, you'll recognize Ian Miller. He's Captain Canada. Uh, amazing getting an opportunity to meet uh, Ian and shaking his hand. He's the, the, the meekest man, just gentle, uh, a, a warm smile. Uh, he actually has the, the record of having the most Olympic appearances at 10. He's also uh, the oldest known Canadian Olympian and uh, an Order of Canada recipient. So amazing the opportunity to, to get to know uh, some of these people. Now, if you take a group of photographers that are used to shooting fast cars and used to panning to get the wheel spin, guess what happens if you take them to the Royal? <laughs> you get really fast looking tractors because they're panning it to look like they're, that's going like maybe walking speed and the guy that's shooting it is actually up in the grandstands. And just, he's goofing around having some fun. And when we showed the, uh, the organizers this, they just thought it was hilarious. Uh, the Royal has got all sorts of things going on. This is Tim Hicks, um, not much of a country music uh, follower. Uh, but when you're standing in the front, like in front of the front row, right in front of the speakers, thankfully with headphones on, uh, you, you kind of become a fan because you have nowhere to run from this amazingly loud thing happening in front of you. Uh, but our opportunity was to turn around and say, hey, how are people enjoying this? And uh, the people that were there at the, the show were right into it. OK, where's Melanie? Is Melanie here? Oh, 
I specifically put some super dogs in here just for Melanie, so I'm going to have to show her uh, afterwards. Oh, sorry, this is kind of yellow. Uh, again, just showing the crowds, having some fun. And, uh, you know, if I'm not shooting horses, I'm shooting a concert. If I'm not shooting concert, I'm shooting dogs. You know, here's a, a motivational poster opportunity here for, uh, for uh, Melanie's screensaver, maybe. I'm so sorry she's not here. I'm going to have to show her later. Um, but it, it's fun. And, and so this is, uh, this is kind of what turns my crank. Now, you kind of go from some of the animals like this being right into it. Like, this is a very willing participant because there's a big treat coming, and this is... The dog's having fun, obviously. <laughs> Other animals, not so much. <laughs> so here's one that just decided to stop moving. And you see the guy just leaning into it, trying to get them uh, to show. Now, as I said, one of the things I do in my job, I'm a storyteller. And there's a, a really fabulous story that I have to tell about learning how to shoot cows. Because believe me, I knew nothing about cows as a city kid. And uh, I was shooting the, the Grand Dairy Supreme Champion, OK? This is a huge cows with big udders and just walking around like they own the place. And like this is like the pinnacle of the cow judging world. <laughs> and, and so I was told to get a good shot of the, of the person who won and with their, with their cow. So I'm like waiting patiently, snapping a few shots, waiting patiently. So person won. Great. So I position myself perfectly to get a nice shot of the cow's head and the person standing beside him. The person doesn't come to stand next to the cow's head. No, they go around to the back side of the cow, move the tail away so you can see this beautiful udder. And I'm like, I don't know what to think of this. I don't know if I can take this picture. This is weird. <laughs> so I'm running around, snapping a picture, and everyone's just killing themselves laughing because they totally set me up for that. Um, so anyways. That's, that's my funny cow story. There's, uh, there's also stories of, of form and etiquette. And so this is a picture of dressage. And so you have this very serious uh, opportunity to demonstrate uh, your mastery of your horse and, and just uh, the constraint and the control. And it's uh, really quite amazing. Uh, and so there's, there's a little bit of everything. But then we also get a chance to take a picture of some of the people enjoying the show. Um, so this is, you know, come see why, the friend, why Friendly feels good. It was a TELUS thing. This couple, this older couple learning VR, didn't look all that friendly. They're just standing there. It was just really funny. Uh, but how are people engaging with the cooking event? And how are people engaging with the, the booths? And, and what are some of the vendors doing that's interesting? Um, the most interesting thing, I think, that I shot uh, was the 4-H the competition, which is all the, the junior competitors. Uh, so this is uh, this shot happens to be uh, a, a number of ladies, but there it's it's a mixed uh, co-ed competition, and uh, it's all cows, uh, and these kids kids young people are from all over Canada. They've traveled from the Maritimes. They've traveled from the prairies. This is the big deal, you know. If they win their local fair, this is where you come to put it all on the line, and it's serious business. Um, Here's a shot of you know, one of the, the young people uh, spending all day grooming and trimming their cow just perfectly. Now, I don't know enough about cows to know the difference, but some of them are groomed really closely. Some of them are like blow dried and fluffy. You know, like, do my ankles look fat? You know, like, it's just hilarious. So, but they spend all day working hard with their animals to make them look perfect. And you can see the ages uh, are very varied. We have a uh, late teenager and, and probably a tween there. And you, you watch someone that's like 60 pounds soaking wet leading around a, a cow. It's, 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 it's awesome. But the story that I want to share with, with what I was able to observe was a, a, they, they, they're brought into the, the ring. And I'm right there in the ring with them, which is kind of cool. And they, they do their thing, and again, it's to show control over their animal and to show that it's got a nice gait and a nice you know, posture and all the rest. And they've worked all day to make this perfect. And sometimes the animal just does not want to be there. The, the lights get too much. Me snapping pictures in his face gets too much, whatever it is. And one of these cows just decides to do its own thing, walk over to the center, lay down. Just, I don't want to be here. I'm done. And the girl is beside herself. 
she's just having a breakdown because everything she's led up to, her parents, you know, watching, everyone back home watching, and she's now come in dead last because this cow. And the judge had an opportunity to come over, reassure her, just puts an arm hand on her shoulder, and just, I don't know what she said, but reassured her enough to say, it's okay, we know this happens, we get it, here's what we do, helped her get the animal standing up again, and just calmed her right down and just said, life happens, let's keep going. And it was just a, a really tender moment. Now, I didn't take any pictures, because I don't want to show pictures of a, a younger person having a meltdown, freaking out that, oh, now there's a camera guy over there taking my picture. So, sorry, I can't show you the story, uh, but even just telling it, I'm, I'm tearing up a little bit because it was such a, a tender moment. And, uh, and it's really one of those kinds of stories that as, as I work hard and, and do the work in the volunteering, uh, it really uh, makes it interesting for me. Then there's also, of course, cuteness overload. Um, the, the young kids showing the young kids, <laughs> as it were, the, the baby goats. Um, and there's, there's lots of examples of uh, crazy cute kids uh, and, and learning how to show uh, their animals and, and, and doing that sort of thing. And there's a mix between the city kids who have never seen a chick before and the country kids who are helping their parents with the, the lambs and, the, and the, the, the livestock and making sure things get fed and just, you know, one is like, wow, that's a chick. And the other one is like, yep, yeah, I'm going to grab this, this thing of, of feed and, and make sure my animals are looked after. Um, and then there's some exciting things, too. Uh, this is Amber Marshall, not on the horse, but on the, the left-hand side. Uh, so if anyone's a fan of Heartland, she's also a, a lovely person to, to meet. Um, and, and who knew that Toronto has a rodeo? Did anyone know that Toronto has a rodeo? Yeah. It's kind of fun. It's like the original adrenaline sport. So if you're into uh, you know, some of these X games and stuff like that, you should, you should see what these crazy people do on the backs of, of horses and, and bulls. It's, it's insane. So that's just sort of a, a bit of a, a glimpse of some of my photos. I love, obviously, talking about uh, what, what I do. Uh, sometimes people walk up to me and they'll say, oh, hi, you're John, right? Yeah, you're the professional photographer. It's like, no, I'm just a guy, and I enjoy shooting, and I enjoy doing uh, fun stuff with my gear. Uh, but for me, it's all about having an opportunity to give back, to have some fun, to serve, and as we said already, that there's so many amazing things that we have been given, skills, talents, money. What are the ways that we do to give back? What do we do to bring glory to God? There's people on my team, uh, and the indie team as an example, it's a larger team. Um, we have uh, everything from, you know, mechanic, we have a, a journalism student, we have you know, just all, all places of life. We have a, a genomics PhD, like a propeller head, genuine propeller head from hospital for sick kids. And he's a great photographer and he does this too. He takes his vacation time and comes down to help out. They all know that I am a person of faith. And that has opened up fabulous conversations uh, over time. And it's been an opportunity for me to take my volunteering and, and my passion and bring glory to God with it. And so that's really how faith and work come together in a very practical sense. And I don't make a cent from my photos. Some of my photos have been used uh, in publication, in newspapers, in magazines. Uh, sometimes I get a free copy of the magazine uh, that it's in. Sometimes I get a photo credit. Sometimes I don't. I've never made a cent. It's OK. It's fun. So volunteering, just as a, a, a big picture, it takes hundreds and hundreds of volunteers to help make things happen. Many of the things that you may go and enjoy, whether it's a rib fest or maybe it's the Royal or maybe it's any number of these things, this is just a fun way to find something to, to get connected into and I would encourage you to do that. Now, I don't do it because I'm bored, I can assure you. I have plenty to do. Uh, Stan keeps me very busy, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's not because you're sitting around at home and you're sitting on your hands wondering what to do and you've already watched everything on Netflix. Uh, it's an opportunity to be out, to, to build in yourself as well. And, and to have a, a sense, you know, the Winston Churchill quote there, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. And so my volunteering opportunities have been ways that I've 
built my life, and I take great uh, joy from them. But it's not just my photography skills that I volunteer, so I want to kind of bring this around for all of the different skills that we have. Uh, I was originally introduced to the indie because I had a leadership skill that was perceived by somebody because they knew that I was a pastor. So I use my leadership skills on various boards, and they are always looking for a fundraiser, so I have an opportunity to lend those skills to boards as well. What is it that you and I are doing, and what are the skills that we have been blessed with that we can be using uh, to give back? Now, next slide. I, I like this uh, quote and, and just this, uh, this piece from Philemon, and especially the last line from Philemon there, that your good deeds might be voluntary and not something forced. And if you're doing it reluctantly, it's, it's, not, a, it's not service. And this was actually a really difficult, you know, kind of the other side of volunteering, being a pastor where everyone is volunteering and you kind of feel like you're herding cats sometimes. Uh, the hardest thing for me to learn was to not put that expectation on somebody. So we need a Sunday school teacher. Phil, you're a, you're a school teacher. You should be teaching our grade fives. Uh, you know, I'm kind of busy. I don't... How uns unspiritual can you be? You're, you've got a beautiful gift and a talent that you've, you're using professionally. Why wouldn't you use it in the church? Why wouldn't you volunteer? And, I, and I, was, I had to learn that it's up to that person to choose to willingly serve and to choose to give of themselves in that way. And, and that's a lesson that, that can come difficult for any of us, but it's something I just wanted to touch on. So just as my last slide, I just wanted to leave you with this thought. It's from 1 Peter 4.10. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. So whether that is the gift of bounty, of possessions, of money, whether that is your time, whether that is the skills and your talents and the things you do for fun, that we have an opportunity to serve one another with all of those things. And I just want to encourage you today that volunteering is a, a wonderful way for work and faith to find a practical outlet in our lives. And so I want to encourage that for us today. So thanks for letting me share a little bit about who I am. <laughs>